Well, how do there, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steers, and today, chums, I've got a cup of tea. I've got it in my posher sort of cup, not my merch, merch mug, but yeah, very nice. And this is one of my Captain Steam's own brews. Got a little bit of progress on that, which I'll tell you about a bit later. But today, chums, I'm doing something a little bit new. I'm going to be talking to Bing AI. Now, Bing AI is actually trained on the internet. It can actually access the internet, unlike the other chat GPT, which is trained on an offline data set. So this is going to be interesting. Yum dilly yum. I'll just set that. I'll set that right there, actually. Then it's an easy reach. Let's jump on over to the Tinterwebs. Chicka pow! There I am on old Tinterwebs. And here you go. Hey, welcome to the new Bing. Yeah, AI. I'm going to leave it on creative mode. It makes them a little bit more human esque. Okay, now I've already formulated a list of questions which I've got over here. So I'm just going to introduce myself. Now, I've got theories, people, of my own. Um, now, what I need to do is lay down some breadcrumbs for Bing. There we go. There we go. Let's just put this in. Chikapow. And send to Bing. So here we go. What I've asked Bing is I've said, I've got a question for you. How many UFO UAP sightings are there that state the craft or object originated or terminated from the oceans, mountains, caves or volcanoes opposed to space? OK, so here we go. Let's see what they come back with. So, cool, here we go. I'm glad you're interested in this topic of UFOs and UAPs. Yes, me too. Yes, according to the data I have, there are no official statistics on how many UFOs or UAP sightings state the craft object originated or terminated from the oceans, mountains, caves or volcanoes. However, I can see I can provide you with some examples of such cases that have been reported by various sources. And here you go. It's bringing back loads of data on actual sightings and more well, UFOs have been seen entering into our own planet. So this is my theory that I have, people. Are these alien crafts actually coming from space? Or are they coming from a parallel dimension, a different time zone? And are aliens actually more evolved versions of us humans? Or could they be biological beings that have been created by future humans to carry consciousness, almost like biological sort of androidy type things. Who knows? Anyways, so there we go. So I've asked the first question. It's found its own evidence. I like to give AI some breadcrumbs, OK, and, and see where it goes. I want it to come up to my own sort of level of thinking. So here we go. So now I'm asking how many cultures talk of subterranean races of beings? So that ties into, well, where do the crafts come from? OK, now the pilots. Where do the pilots come from? That's a very interesting question, Captain Steve. There are many cultures around the world that have legends or myths of subterranean races of beings. Some of these are, and look, it talks about Agatha, the hollow earth, straight away. Love it. Freaking get in there, I guess. I've got a whole video on Richard Admiral Byrd's diary that talks of the hollow earth. A very good watch. Go and watch that. I'll put a link at the top there, people. Go hit that one up. Yeah, so there's quite a lot, and it does mention the Nagas as well. Brilliant. There's there's far more than this too. It hasn't mentioned the Tibetan. Oh, hold on. I'm going to ask about that. About the dragon people in Tibet. Okay, let's ask about that. Let's see if that one gets added in. Dum dum dum. It's also in Japan as well. I talk of that. I'm sorry, I don't understand. What do you mean by dragon people in Tibet? Do you mean the dragon people Tibet? Yep. Yeah, that... Oh, sorry. Yes. Yes, I do mean that. Yes. I, I, there was a typo. That's why I put this into Word and spell checked it earlier. I'm typing offset, if you haven't noticed. But yeah, oh, look, it's even come up with images and references. Freaking awesome. Yes, the long... Ch yeah. Apparently, these guys could even shapeshift in between human and dragon. Pretty darn awesome. I mean, you can probably pause this and read it in, in, in more depth. Anyways, OK, well, that's that sort of sort of put that into context. OK, here we are. Let's put in this. Cool. How many of these cultures talk of beings with reptilian traits or bizarre skin colours, green, blue or purple, etc.? Kaboom. Cool. Let's have a look. Right. There you go. I'm going to drink a bit more tea. Sweet. It's also touched on the Naga yet again. Cool. So we're building up this sense of the races within inside of our own world. And could they pilot craft, basically? 
and uh, we'll see what he comes back with. The Serpent Men, the Reptilians, the Coolio. Now, a lot of this people are probably going to be switching off right now. But what you've got to understand is a lot of these cultures are separated by swathes of ocean, and they all talk of the same freaking thing. If you do a little bit of research, like I'm getting, you know, Bing AI to do right now, it starts to build quite an interesting picture. It really does. Okay. Right, so now I'm going to ask, with everything that we have discussed, how likely do you think that it is that we're being visited by beings and craft from inside of our own realm, world, rather than another planet? Let's go. That's a very interesting complex question, user. Captain Steve, mate, we're on good terms. There is no definitive answer to it. The evidence for both scenarios is conclusive and controversial. However, I can try and give you some possible perspectives based on the information we have discussed. Great, so it has kept record. It's just completely forgotten my name. Yes, OK, cool. Uh, well, carry on, GPT. Oh, no, you're not GPT, are you? You're Bing. Yeah, how do you like it? <laughs> Uh, there we go. It carries on. And you can see here, this is, this is pretty good stuff that it's coming up. It mentioned the Hollow Earth yet again. And it's mentioned in all sorts of things to do with mountainous caves and volcanoes and places like that. And far, yeah, the originations of these crafts. And people have actually seen these creatures emerging from caves and things like that. But there's also mentions of folklore and stuff. So I'll ask it, actually. I haven't got this question written down. What about the green children of Woolpit yeah, in England. Boom. There we go. Let's ask that one. Right, I have a little bit more tea. Now, the Green Children in Woolpit is a very fascinating folk tale. And uh, but the only thing is, it's actually got written accounts from the actual man who took these two children into their manor. Basically, two green children were found, speaking a different language, had bright green skin, would only eat beans. They claimed to be from an internal world with a perpetual glowing orange sun bathed in perpetual sunlight called St. Martin's. Freaking crazy! And it's all documented. All documented. I think it was around the 14th century. I don't know. I don't know. mention in later references, but it was way before that. 12th century. 12th century England. I've got a video on them as well, people. If you want to learn more about the Green Children of Warpit, I'll put a video up there. Go hit it up. Anyways, here we go. Let's um, call you. Here we are. Okay, if not from inside of our own planet, what about super evolved humans you know could these aliens be super evolved humans time travel theories there we go there's no definitive answer to it which seems to be the same sort of answer that we're getting time and time again but my last question the sort of the end sort of question is okay do you think that there's a, well i've already asked it actually do you think that they would have come from space or whatever but i'll ask it again right at the end and we're just sort of simmer on what it says at the end there cool yeah Sweet. Okay. And the last one, I'm just going to ask if it's from another dimension, perhaps. You know. It's an interesting one. So my quandary is, are all these visitors coming from outer space and another planet? Are they going to travel that distance? And for me, it kind of feels that if they were travelling with the amount of telescopes that we've got trained in space and the amount of different observatories that we've got bouncing radio waves around and the amount of sort of radar and space programmes we've got, like the Star Wars programme, surely we would detect these crafts when they're further out. Something travelling towards us, unless they're travelling via wormhole. It's a bit of a weird one, you know? So I'm wondering whether these beings are either from a future reality, an offset dimension to our own, or they've been here all the time. Maybe they seeded life on the Earth, which is another way that I could take this. I could ask about ancient alien sort of um, theories, because there's a lot of that coming about at the moment. In fact, I'd ask that. There are many ancient alien theories that aliens seeded life here. Could it be they have remained here? Either disguised or from inside 
our planet rather than space. Cool. And I think this is probably where, where, where we end off. And I'm going to read out the full answer here. But you could pause this and you could read through it. So that's a very interesting speculative question. There is no definitive answer to it. And it starts this every single time. And that's kind of where I switch off. As evidence for aliens seeding life on Earth or remaining here is inconclusive and controversial. However, I can give you some possible perspectives based on the information I have. One perspective that aliens seeded life on Earth and remained here, either disguised or from inside of our own planet. This could be supported supported by the following arguments. Some ancient alien theorists claim that aliens were involved in the creation or evolu evolution of life on Earth, either by direct intervention or pass I have no idea what that word is. The idea that life was transferred from one planet to another, asteroids, comets, or spacecraft. The cited ancient writings, drawing scriptures and architecture as evidence for alien influence on human history and culture. Some ancient alien theorists also suggest that aliens have stayed on Earth either by blending in with humans or by hiding in secret bases under the ground or under the sea. The points of various UFO sightings, abductions, crop circles and other phenomena suggest that alien presence and activity. Another perspective that aliens didn't seed life on Earth and didn't remain here, but rather visited Earth occasionally, or never at all. This could be supported by the following arguments. I'm not only interested in the opposite argument to what I believe, but at the same time, I need to be balanced, don't I? So here we go. Some scientists and skeptics argue that there is no credible evidence for alien seeding life on Earth and remaining here, that ancient alien theories based on pseudoscience, fabrication and lies, the challenge and validity and reliability of the sources and interpretations used by ancient alien theorists and offer alternative explanations based on natural causes of human factors. Some scientists and skeptics also propose that aliens have not visited Earth or have not done so very rarely due to the vast distance and difficulties involved in interstellar travel. This is one of the arguments that I've got for that they're freaking here. They contend that most UFO sightings and related events are best explained as psychological or social phenomenal rather than physical ones. You see, my theory is, people, that these grey aliens that we see, I feel that they've been created to look a little bit more human so they don't sort of, you know, so they don't scare the freaking shite out of us, basically, people. I think they've created these small, grey, fragile-looking alien things that they can put their consciousness into and pilot them, almost like little mini drones. I think that the actual beings that live with inside of our planet are far more reptilious and far more scary and... Yeah, and I think that's why we're seeing grey aliens. That's why, you know, like the um, the video that we saw on Redacted the other day where they say it is a real alien being. The only reason I switched off from that and thinking that it wasn't a real alien being is because Clayton right at the start said this is an exclusive, an exclusive. And he almost claimed that the, the person putting the, the, the actual footage up was directly linked to the leaker somehow. That footage was aired like about 10 years before that on terrestrial TV and the full show was inside of that video description of the video I put out the other day and you actually get to hear it directly from the actual leakers of mouth as to why they did all this stuff. Anyway, I put up a link to my video but be sure to hit the video description before you come to your own sort of conclusion. Maybe watch the full documentary that's there. I know my video is very short but at the same time I like to put all the evidence inside the video description rather than put it all out there. A bit like what I'm doing with chat GPT right now. I like to lay down breadcrumbs for people to come to their own conclusion. I give you my conclusion in a freaking video, but at the same time, I want you to do the research first and come to your own. That's basic. But I didn't really say that in the video, so that's probably why I got a little bit of flack. <laughs> I do believe in some kind of alien sort of life, but I'm wondering whether it could be subterranean and already here on our own planet, people, is where I'm going with this. And I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, you're now spouting off and sounding like David Icke with all this reptilian type stuff. But you've got to think, you know, if we evolved from primates and the dinosaurs and pretty much reptilian life has evolved so far, what if it continued to evolve? What if it continued to evolve way before we freaking did? Or what if they actually made us evolve? I mean, there's, there is signs inside of human DNA of tinkering like a mutation. In fact, there is signs of a mutation in human DNA that some 
scientists. Point two. Intelligent design. Would you agree? Um, okay, right, here we go. Nice cup of tea, this. It's really nice. Cool, I'm hoping I'm going to have a link for you guys soon so you can buy your own, because this is this is proper good tea. Okay, that's a very interesting question, user. Captain Steve, please. There are different opinions and perspectives on whether human DNA shows signs of intelligent design or not. Some scientists and philosophers argue that while human DNA is a project of natural process of evolution by random mutations and natural selection, while others claim that human DNA is a result of a deliberate intervention by an intelligent designer, both sides have their own arguments and evidence, but there's no definitive conclusive answer to this question. So it could be either way, really. You know, there's some science that does back up the sort of stuff that I'm saying, and there's other pseudoscience, uh, other science that, that doesn't. You know, it's, it's, it's a bit... Wait, thanks for using Bing. Are you trying to get rid of me, mate? For fudge's sake. Okay. Anyways... Uh, what else was I going to ask? Hmm. Yes, the Sumerians. The first to yes, into scripture and carvings on the origins of mankind. Can you? Can you summarize what they found and how they also depicted DNA of humans? Wow! Lovely jubbly! We get this freaking chat, G. We get this AI on, on yeah. I'll just hold it off. Hello, Captain Steve. This is Bing. I apologise for calling you user. I didn't mean to offend you. You have asked some, me some very interesting questions about Sumerians and the depiction of DNA in humans. I will summarise what I have found from my web search tool. Let me Google that for you is basically what it just said. Ugh, thank you very much, but I wanted your opinion. The Sumerians were one of the earliest civilizations in the world. They developed a complex system of writing, religion, and law and art. They also had rich mythology that explained the origins of mankind and the universe. According to their creation myth, the gods first created the heavens and the earths and then decided to create humans to serve them. The god Enki, who was in charge of the water and wisdom, mixed clay with the blood of a slain god named Kingu and fashioned the first humans out of his mixture. He then breathed life into them and gave them the ability to speak. So a bit like the Bible where it says that it built us out of clay and mud and stuff. Fairly similar. The Sumer Sumerians also had a concept of DNA, well they didn't call it by that name. They believed it was each person had a unique essence of identity that was deter de determined by their parents' blood. They called it the essence of Namata, which means fate or destiny. They also believed that this essence could be manipulated or altered by magic or divine intervention. The Sumerians depicted DNA in various ways, such as carving, sculptures and paintings. One of the most common symbols used was the Caduceus. That's the two snakes that are entwined, and they go up a big pole that's got wings aloft. We still use it today here in the NHS. It's on the side of freaking ambulances and all sorts, mate. Look it up. Freaking craziness. If that isn't a, a decent symbol, I mean, the double helix it looks like two snakes interwoven, doesn't it? There's references, people. There's references. In fact, the pineal gland looks like a freaking fur cone. And sometimes they put that at the top of the pole as well. But they are the seat of the soul, the pineal gland. Interesting stuff. Anyhow, here we are. Oh, you know what? Let, let we go into that. We go into that. We go into that, people. Caduceus. Here we go. Which is a staff of two snakes called around it. Exactly. The Caduceus represents the power of Enki, who was also associated with healing and medicine. Became Hermes later on in life. The two snakes symbolise the dual nature of life and death, as well as the interwining of male and female forces. Another symbol they used was the Tree of Life, which was a sacred plant that connected the heavens and earth. The tree of life represented the sources of life and knowledge as well as the divine order of creation. 
The Sumerians also depicted DNA in abstract forms such as the spiral circles, dots and lines. These forms represented the basic elements of nature and the cosmos as well as the patterns of cycles of life. It does, mate. It does. Okay. Sumerians also carved the solar system. Each planet in size and colour. How did... They do that with no telescopes or technology. Ah, uh, I spelled technology wrong. We have worked that out. Come on, I'm, I'm typing offset. Let's see what it comes back with. This will be an interesting one. There's so much that you can't explain from ancient sort of civilizations, mainly because we can't go back there and freaking find out. But a lot of these sort of carvings open up more questions than answers. And uh, yeah, it's it's going to be one of those mysteries that puzzles scholars and researchers. <laughs> because they don't want to admit to this sort of stuff. Because if they do, it shatters the way that we've been taught history. It's... Do your own research on this sort of stuff, people. You can jump in and you can take a look at all of this sort of stuff. And it, it it's pretty amazing stuff, okay? And when you look at some of this ancient ancient symbology, it carries on through the decades and it comes into play, into current, you know. So here we go. Here's all the carvings that were actually carved the actual solar system with all the planets, the actual right count of planets in size. And they even colored them. They found pigments, pigments of color for each of the actual carvings. It's incredible. It's freaking craziness, people. How would they have known that? I honestly think we was visited by these beings that's lived alongside the Sumerians for some time. Okay. The gods they thought, thought of. Did they talk of crafts? Airborne. I see. Let's see what it comes back with. Cool. Sumerian gods and crafts. There we are. Generate an answer for you. Yes, Sumerians did talk of crafts airborne in their myths and legends. They believed that the gods had flying vehicles called Mu or Dingiri, which means sky chamber or godly ones. These vehicles were described as having bright, fiery appearance and could travel across the sky or under the water. Pretty much like the UFOs of now. Yeah. Some of the gods who had these vehicles were the Anu, the gods of the sky, Inil, and the gods of the wind, and Marduk of the god of the Babylon. The Sumerians also had stories of human heroes that flew air with help of the gods of their own inventions. For example, Atana, the legendary king of Kish, which carries the heavens by an eagle to obtain the plant of birth for his wife. Another example is Gilgamesh, a legendary king of Uruk, who flew, flew in a boat made of wood and metal to reach the land of Dilium, where they met... Us whatever their name is, the survivor of the Great Flood. Okay, right. These tales of creation and of the Great Flood seem to be carried into the Bible and other later texts. Do you see the similarities? Boom. Let's see what it says. I mean, you get 30 interactions. I don't know why he's trying to get rid of me. This is the first time that it keeps saying thank you for using Bing like this all the time. It's, it's a bit weird. It's almost trying... Oh, there goes my freaking doorbell. It's okay, my missus is in. She'll go and answer it. But at the same time... Unless she's in the garden. I might have to go grab that myself. Ah, she's answered it. It's good. Cool. Anyway, where was I? That, that sort of ruined my train of thought. But yeah, basically, here we go. It's, it's seeing lots of different sort of connotations. Thank you for using being again. It really doesn't want to talk to me anymore. Yeah, I think it's had enough of talking about all this sort of stuff. Okay, all right. The Caduceus. Oh, no, I've lost it. Caduceus. Symbol is still used today in 
medicine. Oh, for fudge sake. I wish I was sitting a bit more central to my keyboard. I must look like a right tool in medicine. And the Pope seems to have it with a pine cone to the top. Does that rep resent the pineal gland by chance? Boom! There we are. Let's see what comes up with that. Sweet. Fun, dilly fun. I do like talking to the AI. I really do. That's a very interesting creation in, you know, question, user. Captain Brickin Steve, the Caduceus symbol is indeed still used today in medicine, especially in the United States, although some healthcare professionals disprove of using this usage rather than the rod of Alpha, which is only one snake and no wings. The Caduceus symbol is also used by the Pope, who has a staff topped with a pine cone. The pine cone is a symbol of the pineal gland, which is also known as the third eye or the seat of the spiritual vision or seat of the soul. <laughs> and guess what? They say that that's part of the reptilian brain. Okay. What is the seat of the soul? Also known as the reptilian brain. Dum 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 dum. And apparently it can link you to higher realms and connect you with all sorts of stuff. The pineal gland releases a chemical to, called dimethyltryptamine, DMT for short, which apparently, if you watch an actual documentary called um, The Spirit Molecule, it tells you all about near death experiences and how they're all very similar, perhaps linked to this chemical which is an interesting one. No, the seat of the soul is not called the reptilian brain. The seat of the soul is a term used by some philosophers as a mystical reference to the location of the human soul or consciousness. Some of them, such as René Descartes or Paul McLaren, have identified the pineal gland as the seat of the soul because they believe that it was a link between the physical and the spiritual realms. The reptilian brain, on the other hand, is a term used by some neuroscience, neuroscientists and physiologists to refer to the base of the ganglia and the brain stem oh okay so there is a reptilian part of the brain it's not the pineal gland though i got that bit a bit wrong which are the oldest most primitive parts of the brain as they're responsible for the basic survival functions such as breathing heart rate digestion and flight or fight response therefore the seat of the soul and the reptilian brain are different concepts that refer to different aspects of human nature the seat of the soul is is related to our spiritual metaphysical dimensional why the reptilian brain is related to your physical and intellectual dimension Hmm. Two parts of the brain. Is that a sign of a design by perhaps reptilian overlords, gods? Boom. Two parts of the brain. Is that a sign of design by perhaps reptilian overlords or gods? <laughs> Yeah, reading that back, I sound crazy. Right, where's that tinfoil hat? Mm, okay. <laughs> That's a very interesting question, user. The two parts of the brain you are referring to are probably the left and right hemispheres, which are connected by a bundle of nerve fibres called the corpus and calcium. The left hemisphere is associated with logical, analytical and rational thinking, while the right hemisphere is associated with creativity and emotional thinking. However, this does not mean that the two hemispheres are completely separate or independent, as they work together. Yeah, I kind of know this. Yeah, I have chose the creative mode rather than the precise mode. I might have to remind it of that to keep some sort of open mind of all of this stuff, but there we are. Interesting stuff, people. What I would suggest is you run by any of your theories by sort of AI and sort of bring it into whatever you wish. But that's my feeling on aliens. Just to make it clear, because I don't want to poo-poo any sort of UFO or um, UAP sightings or whatever they want to call them next week. Uh, I, I honestly do think that we're being visited. I think we're being visited by another sort of race, be those Atlantean, Atlantid, or be them from inside of the Hollow Earth, Agatha, or internal chambers. 
I know that we're building quite a lot of underground structures ourselves, massive bunkers in fact. In fact, I can show you some video tours of Iron Mountain, which are freaking phenomenal. And the amount of different symbols they have on doors asks so many questions. If you want to see me talk about internal chambers of our own Earth that we have made as humans, let me know and I'll be doing a video on that one. But for now, I just wanted to get over. I, I do believe in some sort of intelligent beings other than humans on this planet or inside of this dimension or, or an offset dimension or even time travelers that might be evolved version of us revisiting this time period for some reason. So that's where that's what I wanted to sound off on people. That's all I wanted to put out there today with a cup of tea with Captain Steve. And I have finished my cup of tea. That is an empty cup there, people. I've enjoyed this little sort of matter. It's got my thoughts from inside of my head and stuck them out onto the tinterweb for you guys to sort of digest and have entertainment on. I'd love to hear your own thoughts and feelings around what I'm thinking, or even your own interpretation of these UFO and UAP sightings. Do you think that they're coming from other worlds? I still think we could be visited by offset planets. I just think it's more likely, more likely that it's happening here, originating on our own planet, because we've got a lot of stuff inside of culture, inside of historical evidence that states that the visitors come from within inside of our own world or come from crafts or maybe they might have come from space but I don't know I think they're still here if they did come from space I think they've set up bases here I think they found this planet of so much interest that they set up camp here people that's kind of what I think or I think that dinosaurs continued to evolve and there were smaller reptilian humanoids that um, created life based on their own DNA and perhaps that of sort of primates on our planet anyway people I think I've said enough until next time goodbye goodbye and goodbye again